Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode. This is A Week in Geekdom, and I am so happy that you could join me for another installment. And today, we are going to be taking a look at the 2019 summer anime season. Now, I'm not... I wasn't huge into streaming before this year. It was something that I would occasionally watch a few shows because I still prefer the traditional method of Blu-rays and all that stuff. But I gave it a shot and I said, you know what? There are a lot of shows that are coming out this summer or this year. Uh, a lot of new exciting series. I'm going to try and watch as many as I can and give out uh, a review roundup, if you will, when the season ends. So. There were a lot of titles and I have them here on my computer and not all of them hit the mark. Uh, I, I have to admit I stopped watching a few of them uh, as soon as I started simply because it did not appeal to me and there were already too many on the list that I, you know excess fat I could that I could just get rid of I would do so. So uh, yeah let's let's get started. The first one on the list that I'm going to be talking about of course the fan favorite sensation from spring although it did start early 2019 so kind of winter uh, but it did last for 26 episodes and of course I am talking about Demon Slayer the manga is super fun action-packed and all that stuff but it wasn't until this adaptation for the franchise as a whole to get like this second win and really become something spectacular of course I honestly do believe, aside from the story and uh, the way the characters are written and all that stuff from the original source material, I do have to make a statement that if it weren't for UFO Table, uh, I don't think the anime would have been as received as it was. UFO Table is top tier anime studio in my opinion. You know, they've done fantastic job. They've done a fantastic job in the past with other titles like the Fate series and all that stuff. They're, they're quality quality product all their shows just have a distinct masterful appearance to them and i and, and a lot of people just caught on and and they were loving it i loved going to uh different social media and and reading the reactions from people as the, the episodes were coming out the show really did a fantastic job of elevating uh, the original story that, well, yeah, uh, the art may not be to everybody's liking and it may have a few faults here and there, but the series just takes it to a different level, in my honest opinion. Uh, the voice actors uh, did a fantastic job. The animation is masterful, like I just said, and everything just clicks on that title. It looks in sync. It behaves the way it should, and it provided a very solid uh, beginning, middle, and end to a series. Uh, the finale and the way it ends, it's very awesome. The last few episodes, I'm going to, well, actually, every single mini arc within that first season just had really standout moments. And yeah, it, it was the hit show of 2019. And even though I'm posting this as we're in fall of 2019, I'm confident enough to say that 2019 will be remembered fondly for Demon Slayer. It has, um, like seriously, if the series is trending worldwide on Twitter after, I think it was episode 18 or 19, you know the one I'm talking about, you know you've reached like superstardom level. And at the end of the episode, we got the tease that they're going to do the next arc, the following arc with the train stuff in a single movie. That is awesome. Like literally, season one ends, boom, you're getting a movie. And hopefully, hopefully. Uh, season 2 doesn't take too long after the movie, just saying, because that could happen, that we might see a delay. If not, then yay. So yeah, Demon Slayer, just fantastic. Loved it. Uh, after that, um, I wanted to mention Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone is fantastic. I love the manga. I am collecting the manga. It is one of my favorite reads. Whenever a new book comes out, I, I cherish the moment because it is such a fun... Uh, look at a post-apocalyptic series with amazing characters, a fun um, exploration of science and survival. 
uh, you know, it sucks for them, but it's entertaining for us to see how uh, Senku and gang uh, work around the problems at hand and them not having the items necessary to improve their quality of life. So it's very entertaining and, and very awesome. The anime is really well done, in my opinion. The, everything looks really awesome. It's very similar to the manga art from Boichi, but it stands on its own as, as a little bit extra. Like the, It has sort of that um, extra flavor to it. The music, easily one of the best soundtracks of 2019, in my honest opinion. Listen to the music score. I'm not talking about the openings and endings. That's a topic for a whole nother day. But seriously, watch uh, the series and pay close attention to the musical score. It, it breathes life into a show that could otherwise be a little bit more monotonous. I don't know. I, I thought it was really uh, well done uh, over at uh, TMS, if I remember correctly. So yeah, loved it. Fantastic. Another series that I was watching was Black Clover. Like, well, technically it's not a new series. It's, it's well over 100 episodes now, but it's still continuing as of this post. And um, I like it, even though it has animation... Uh, issues and the way certain episodes are done studio piero cutting corners and, and and several episodes take a hit with the animation uh it's still a very fun series plus the current arc just flips all the tropes on their head and does something really cool uh, with the bad guys and and how the story is going to move forward from here on out i am really excited to find out what uh, happens in the world of black clover next up we get into the weirder ones because like i mentioned i wanted to watch uh as many shows as possible i decided to give it a shot and watch uh do you uh, do you love your mom and her two multi-attacks look i will be completely honest with you i was baited by the art because actually most i would say out of the 12 episodes more than half are really well drawn really well animated but the story is just severely lacking there is a critique to be had about young teenagers and their disregard for their parents but you build that up and then you you know you topple it with uh stupid itchy jokes lewd uh situations that could be embarrassing for characters and really just awkward uh moments overall there are some highlights uh especially with uh porta i think that was her name <laughs> hilarious and extremely cute but other than that a really hollow series that if they do make another one i do not see myself coming back to so it's a pass for me next up if it's for my daughter i'd even defeat a demon lord uh eh. all right uh, i got baited by latina and her cuteness and i do remember when i did the preview video i didn't understand what was going to happen with that series and i read some spoilers with the light novels and i gotta say i am not a fan whatsoever and i was a little bit ticked off for the series because it was headed that route so if you know what happens later on you kind of I hope you agree with me that it's very weird. So I I was already midway to the series and I said, you know what, I'll, I'll just watch this 12 episode run and, and be done with it. it. It choppy animation. Most of the episodes really took a nosedive on that regard. Um, uh, it's cute. The character of Latina, she's the star of this thing and she's super cute. But other than that, it's an easy pass for me. Next up, from David Productions, we got Fire Force. And boy, I mean, I like the manga. Sure, it has a, a few issues uh, with uh, a few of the characters that are more like comedic relief in, pervy, in a pervy way, which is really stupid in my opinion for a battle series like Fire Force. But other than that, David Production, man. I mean, you know, they already have a heavy hitter under their belt with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and now you've got Fire Force. And to me, at least, it's their best production to date. Everything is on point. The sound design, once again, blew me away. I love the effects used for the attacks and fires and all that stuff. Really cool stuff. I really enjoy uh, Fire Force. Plus, the character of Shinra, he 
he wants to be a hero and not necessarily be like like the leader or the top commander or the king or whatever the heck the other shonen protagonists do uh, he wants to be a hero and save people out of a tragedy and a necessity that or i should say out of a necessity that stemmed from a tragedy in his household when he was young so that is really cool and the actual premise when you start finding out like uh they're weaponizing the bad guys and there's a conspiracy involved and the government and uh, production agencies or companies or whatever you want to call it are monetizing on the grief of individuals by using the uh fired up people i forgot the name right now but uh yeah it's, it's pretty interesting it's it's a little unlike uh the rest of the uh battle shonen stuff that plagues nowadays next up to the abandoned sacred beast okay i was really excited about this okay i was really excited about this the premise sounds really freaking cool basically in sort of like a parallel dimension instead of the u.s you got new new patria and the north and south they're having the civil war and to defeat the south the north employs sort of like these mutated um, characters that can turn into like giant kaiju creatures and they do win but eventually we find out that the uh, thing the serum that was used or whatever is making them go crazy and they turn into like a full-fledged monster killing everything inside so they have to put them down the main protagonist the captain of the squad wants to stop this uh, by any means and uh, yeah this series goes off from there it's a very interesting premise i thought it was like a cool action-packed thing uh it's done by mappa studios and i'm a fan of them one they did uh zombie land saga which i love and they did dororo which is one of my favorite shows from recent memory uh the uh tezuka adaptation but here it's like they got their uh b team or c team to animate this thing and like episode one fine serviceable episode two pff, nosedive then three and four eh, it's okay then number five hey this is actually good and then six and seven but it was very inconsistent and uh the story is super cliche you know every story beat and what's gonna happen the one saving grace about this show i will say is the character of nancy uh she is wholesome funny cute and and uh, badass when she uh, learns how to be a badass uh, but i really liked her character and that was i gotta admit that was the only reason i tuned in because i thought her character was pretty interesting compared to all the other uh monster dudes and dudettes i don't know it, it was just serviceable i hope it comes back because it does end on a cool cliffhanger and uh there's still more story to adapt from the manga next up are you lost <laughs> I foolishly claimed on the last video, and I was just joking around, are you lost? That's probably going to be a famous hit uh, when this season starts. It wasn't, but it's still a very funny survival comedy series, and it's only like 12-minute episodes. This group of girls, they get stranded after an accident. I assume it was a plane accident or a boat? I don't know. They get stranded on this island and have to survive. Fortunately for one of them, she is a survival expert, and you actually do learn some really cool stuff about survival uh, tips and whatnot, but, you know, there is some fan service. There is some silly uh, jokes and etchy comedy, but for the most part, it was actually a pretty fun show. I, I enjoyed watching it. The last episode is utterly ridiculous. It too, I, I was laughing so hard at how, of how absurd and stupid it was, but still, it, it, it was fun. Although I do have to, I was a little bit annoyed that, you know, you're on this island. I'm pretty sure it's freaking hot. You do not. Um, there's no way to contact anybody. Nope, let's just keep wearing our bow ties and <laughs> collar pieces and school uniforms all throughout the day. I'm like, wait, isn't it like super hot and humid? Okay. Magical Senpai. Yeah, I know. Another, I think it was 12 episodes, The each one lasting like 12 or 13 minutes. And 
it's filled with a lot of lewd humor, but um, our ma our magician is awesome, and she is a fantastic character. She has a 100% failure rate and gets super nervous when doing magic. She wants to form this magic club in school and gets her assistant involved, and he doesn't, at first he doesn't want to be there, and I, all the jokes turn very sexual at times, but check out the opening and then check out the vocal performance for the lead character easily one of the best vocal performances of the year she did an amazing job it was super funny and and her expressions and reactions to everything that was going on that's difficult to pull off so yeah while the show you might be saying oh that's trash or that's garbage or whatever Pay attention to the vocal performances because I think you'll agree that it was uh, the outstanding portion of that series of Magical Senpai. Next up, something a little bit more serious, wholesome, and pretty fantastically written, O oh Maidens in Your Savage Season. I loved it. All 12 episodes are really, really well done. This teen drama coming of age story about puberty, sexuality, uh, high school life, growing up, uh, finding your own voice who you are and all that stuff you could easily relate to some of the themes involved of course you know them being girls i don't necessarily uh, went through some of the uh, dilemmas uh, for these characters but still it is a fantastically well-written series uh, the, the animation was solid all the way through the performances were great and just um, seeing what these girls were going through and how they involved their club activity with their personal lives and each character had a very powerful and emotional arc all the way through it was serious at times it was funny it was dramatic suspenseful i loved it i thought it was a standout hit and i cannot recommend it enough i was a little bit sad when it ended i didn't know it was just going to be 12 episodes because it did adapt the whole story and the manga ended um uh, ends this month i think uh, october 2019 uh so i think they got maybe like a heads up on how to end the story based on that final volume uh, but yeah it was a little bit sad to see it go but it ended pretty damn well in my honest opinion i wanted more but such is life right astra lost in space this was i, I was really excited simply because of the concept of getting lost in space and trying to survive and all that stuff i'm like oh yes please uh, it it started out fine, then it got a little bit, um, uh, I don't want to say absurd, but a little bit generic with the whole, with the character animations and how they went about solving problems and they just magically had a solution. I do remember one of the characters, like, don't worry, I got this space glue gun that can fix things. I'm like, okay, whatever. But overall... It was really awesome when you do find out why these kids are lost in space and how, what they're going to do to get back and the implications and all that stuff. It's really freaking amazing. I loved it. The final episode, which is like an hour long, that was a surprise. The final episode really hit me in the feels. It was really well done. For a series finale, it hit all the notes. It was an amazing uh, ride to see the character progression all the drama involved and everything in a future and and just i had a rough time watching the ending because it touches upon because it touches on themes that i am personally not comfortable with especially with uh certain aspects of nostalgia and um saying goodbye to uh, loved ones and individuals and all that stuff uh, but it was still a worthwhile experience and i do recommend astro lost in space i i really enjoyed that one next up copcraft copcraft um it has a very interesting premise i could easily see that being launched into like a full-fledged uh movie live action or animation it's really an interesting concept this gate opens and to another dimension and there's a city there where it serves like a bridge between the two uh, between earth and this other world and you get sort of like this mixture of like elves and, and magical creatures and all that stuff living with humans and it deals with like fame drugs crime prostitution and you follow the uh, cops as they deal with all that stuff so it lends itself to a really cool cop drama 
the main characters, uh, our main uh, character is a cop and he is scrungy looking, he's lazy, he can be a badass, but he's doing his own thing. And then uh, he gets partnered with this uh, basically alien chick uh, with basically this alien elf and she is uh, of royalty uh, if I remember correctly and they are solving cases and all that stuff the animation takes a hit unfortunately and like midway there are some episodes where I was cringing at how uh, bad it was but the plot itself is fun and the interaction between the two leads is what keeps the series together in my opinion it I do believe it was a light novel so uh, yeah I, I, I do recommend it. it it may not be everybody's favorite but it's by no means uh, boring you know in a world filled with so many isekais this was a welcome treat in my opinion I thought it was pretty fun fruits basket I remember watching the original way back and I liked it I, I barely remember much uh, it was what 2001 2002 something like that uh, but this new one, I was hooked by the animation, the difference in style and all that stuff. And I really appreciated that they went back and are telling like the whole manga, not just a condensed 24 episode series or however episodes, how many episodes that was. Um, I, I do appreciate that because it gives you a lot more time with these characters to explore all the character interactions and the progression of our main lead and, and, and such. And there are some really heavy feels in this show. Like, I, I was... One, I, I didn't remember much about the old show. So, some of those things were brand new to me. And I haven't read the manga. So, it was like watching it for the very first time. And I loved it. I'm a huge fan. And I cannot wait for season two to see how the story plays out. But some of the episodes, like I just said... I was not expecting like uh, for them to be so emotional, especially towards the end. I think it was like episode 20 and episode 24, two standouts for me. Really awesome stuff. I loved it. Lord El Malloy. All right, I gotta I gotta be completely honest with you. I'm still not done watching it, but it's fun. I watched a couple episodes, and the animation is pretty solid. It follows the character uh, from. Uh, Fate Zero, so you're caught up with him as an adult, and you kind of need to watch the older stuff to get the concept and the world that's built around them, uh, and the characters to get what is happening on this. It's you can't watch it, but at the same time, it would benefit if you know about the Fate uh, world per se, in some regard. Vinland Saga, it's pretty good. I like it, like historical uh, esque drama with uh, Vikings and, and the wars between like Denmark, England, all that stuff in the year 1000 something. <laughs> it's, it's pretty freaking spectacular. Wood Studio once again draws a fantastic series. The characters are all lifelike. Like even the, like you know it's an animated series but at the same time it's so realistic looking that you just get engrossed and you want to step in at but at the same time i sort of felt a little bit nostalgic and sad watching these characters because uh yeah a couple fight scenes are a little a, a tiny little bit um exaggerated but for the most part it's a very vivid realistic depiction of what you know those times would have been um and a lot of people suffered back then so i i watched them and i got sad but really enjoyed what I was watching, you know? It, the series is still ongoing, of course. It's based on the manga. Uh, but it's awesome. If you like that sort of thing, if you like more uh, a more serious, dramatic, and like historical fiction and all that stuff, you're going to have a fun time with Vinland Saga because it is jaw-droppingly beautiful, in my opinion. How heavy are the dumbbells you lift? This was the surprise of the season. I loved every single episode. It was funny, it was cute, and very informative. Like I mentioned, I remember the video I made where I said, if this series can lead to people picking up dumbbells and exercising and trying to do to change their lifestyle and all that stuff then that series is a plus and the show does that they give you exercise lessons they give you tips on healthy living while presenting a very cute comedic story about these girls trying to get in shape of course uh 
macho son and 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 the uh, uh gorilla men and all that stuff macho it, you know really funny it's a blast i i cannot recommend it enough if you want to have a fun time and and watching a very pretty looking comedy give it a shot i think you'll be surprised at how much fun it is all right here are a couple of series i'm looking at the document right here that i skipped i watched a few episodes they simply were not for me i'm kind of I like the concept of isekai because it's, it's escapism in a fun sort of way, but it can cross into like the wish fulfillment thing, you know? So I don't necessarily like all the isekai. I do like some, but not all. I tried Demon Lord Retry, which I thought was not for me. I did not like the first episode whatsoever. I gave another episode a shot, still didn't like it, dropped it. Same with Ari Fureta, I think that was the name. Not for me at all. The ones within, I thought, okay, this is an isekai meets um, uh, Battle Royale and all that stuff. And it, it has its audience. I'm just, this just not for me. And uh, Isekai Cheat Magician. Nope. Didn't like it. Uh, a couple series that I... They're old. They're not new. But I wanted to finish because I had started watching like a few episodes uh, earlier ne earlier in the year, I should say. Uh, Blend S, Odashuda, and Gabriel Dropout. All three are comedy based. They look super cute the way they're animated. Blend S was really funny. Nothing too impactful, but it was still funny. The whole concept of the uh, cafe with the masochist uh and the uh different roles that the girls are playing and all that stuff that was pretty funny uh Odashuda, i watched it because i kept seeing the memes from that series referencing jojo's bizarre adventure and i i uh yeah it's standard harem thing harem series or whatever uh but the concept um how it starts appealed to me i thought it was uh, pretty fun and the jokes were pretty solid i did enjoy the comedy in that series especially with the notebook and all that stuff i thought that was really funny plus the animation was really cute and and, and well drawn in my opinion but the standout was definitely uh gabriel dropout i loved all throughout uh, the series all 12 episodes were just hilarious Zitania is my favorite character in that series she was awesome and it's just really funny. If you haven't tried it, I do recommend it. It was really freaking hilarious to me. I loved it. Uh, so, in a nutshell, I think, yeah, I think I covered everything. That's all. more shows that came out i didn't watch them i might later on i'm in no rush to go back and see them fall is here and so many other shows are starting up and like your regulars like my hero academia uh food wars all that stuff they're all coming back so i want to watch that as well but overall a really fun and draining experience trying to keep up day by day with all of the series that were coming out in different streaming platforms and just you know, just keeping with them overall and try to remember, okay, this series is about this and this is happening on that. So, yeah, it was pretty fun and chaotic at the same time. Have you watched any of the series that I mentioned in this video? Let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. It's always a treat and a privilege that I get to be able to talk to you guys on this platform. That's really awesome and I... And I cannot thank you enough for supporting this channel for uh liking the videos commenting you know being subscribed uh following me on social media all that stuff i it, it's awesome i love you guys thank you so much for tuning in i have got to go i will catch all of you on our next episode